Hey everybody, it's Andrew here and Enzo. And uh, on the other end of the line, we've got Gerben Van Doyle from um, Priscilla uh, and Mariah. How do you actually say that? Maria? Mario. Mario. Today, we're going to talk about home cinema rooms and what you can do in your room or, you know, if you're looking at upgrading or changing speakers. Now, just to introduce Gervin a little bit better, actually, you can do the introduction. Oh, well, well, so, obviously, a lot of people might have watched our YouTube video of our demo room, and obviously, Gervin was there at the time, October last year. Uh, Gervin's from Procella Speakers and has a history with uh, DTS in the past, um, and we thought we'd get Gervin along because... Uh, you know, we love what Priscilla does and, and, you know, we highly value his opinion as well. And I think uh, today's topic is uh, going to be quite useful uh, with uh, Kevin Gerben on board live. Welcome, mate. So we've got you on, um, well, it's not Skype, we're actually on Jitsi, um, which is a Chrome-based um, uh, interface, which is actually working very well. Um, and you, uh, where are you? Where are you in the world? Oh, well, I'm at home um, in the northern beaches, um, about two kilometers uh, from DY Center, which last night was uh, identified as a corona hotspot in Australia. So I'm not going to the beach for a little while. So they finally tracked you down, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but just for people that don't know, obviously that's in Australia. Um, so um, yeah. Gerben's on the east coast, we're on the west coast uh, in Perth. Um, so, hey... Five- 5,000 kilometers between us in the same country. How about that? That's pretty awesome, yeah. 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 So, um, uh, also, this is pretty exciting for us. Um, we're trying to improve and upgrade our, um, our YouTube channel and, and the interfaces that we're using. Yeah. So, um, this is the first time we've tried a, a live chat. Um, and uh, so, bear with us. We might have a few technical glitches. And um, look, if for those of you who are watching, please comment below. And you know, we welcome your feedback and, and, and the information that you can give us and, and your thoughts on this. So, home cinema rooms. You know, we've all seen and been to a lot of different home cinema rooms. But Evan, tell us well, what you know. What do you? What first strikes you in terms of what people do wrong in home cinema rooms? Oh, what can you do wrong? You can do a lot of things wrong. Um... Yeah, let's not let's not start in bed and let's start on what I like when I walk into any room. First of all, um, any good room, if even if you come from very basic beginnings and we all started there with the TV and a bunch of loudspeakers, uh, get your room to be dark. Yeah, first and foremost, get your room to be dark. Uh, darken your colors, darken the, the 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 equipment, darken the the the. the the colors of the wall so you get good dynamic range on your video that is probably the first thing you want to do is get good curtains get good blackouts get that light influx down and get a dark room um and already i mentioned the word there that is very important which is dynamic range and funnily enough for an audio guy i'm talking now about the dynamic range for the video whatever you do with whichever projector you're using be it a budget or a mid-range or an expensive model if you can get the uh, ambient light to come down, your dynamic range goes up, everything becomes better straight away. You guys know more about that than I do. Yep. Same thing is true for your audio, dynamic range. And uh, dynamic range is something that at Priscilla Audio we talk a lot about. Dynamic range gives you the real live experience that you're after. That whole uh, life-like you know, or bigger than life um jump out of your seat uh experience from the audio that is what you want for your home cinema room no matter how small your room is and you know when you go to a commercial cinema and you get the big explosions and the big crescendos in the the music that is the you know the jump out of your seat effect that that a big commercial cinema gives you and you can have that at home what you need there is dynamic range so you need loudspeakers that can do all the soft stuff really well but they can do all the loud stuff also and in order to achieve that, um, we were, um, you know, the, the, the industry at large was upgraded in 2000, somewhere like that, to 9624 recordings. And I happen to have uh, two of the uh, DTS demo discs here. This is uh, number 23 and this is number 24. When I worked at DTS, we were working on DTS demo discs number 5, 6, 7, 8 nine that's where you'll see my name on them if you still have those um they were nine we'll have to get them autographed mate yeah so 9624 recordings means that nine six thousand times per second we're recording the audio in a 24-bit sample 
And it's the 24 bits that we're interested in because that allows us to record up to a theoretical 132 decibels of dynamic range. Now, we don't use all of that. We use definitely up to 115, 120 decibels of dynamic range within that. But that is what gives you the, you know, the loud noises, the loud explosions, the big crescendos, the, uh, the, the big peaks. So if I can just cut in there for a sec, we recently did a video and we talked about dynamic range in terms of actually people protecting their hearing. And one of the things that I wanted to make really clear is, you know, our target is a minimum of 105 decibels in, in one, if not all of the seats. But yeah. one of the things I really want to clarify with people is that that doesn't mean that you play your entire system at 105 decibels all the time. As you said, no, it, no. it's, no, you no. know, because we get people who we finish the cinema and they just crank it up and up and up. And it's like, no, no, guys, this is so you've got headroom for those transient those spikes, scenes. those explosions and those noises and, and, and the cracks of lightning. And, and that's correct, isn't it? Correct. And those are typically quite short, so they don't uh, put a, a big load on your eardrums. Mm. But also, if your system is capable of reproducing those big peaks, you know, the high peaks into the 105, 110 decibel range, if your system is truly capable of doing that, your system will not suffer. It will not then introduce distortion. And it is, in fact, the distortion that damages your hearing. Mm. If those peaks come through clean and clear with the clarity that they're recorded at, that does not damage hearing nearly as much as a whole bunch of distortion that is not, if that is introduced by your system. Mm. So if you design a system correctly with all the 9624 capabilities in the whole chain, amplifiers, speakers, etc., you will not introduce any distortion at that stage. And that means you don't introduce a danger of hearing damage. So that is really important to distinguish there. And I think there was a, I mean, we're quite active in the um, home theatre forum space um, on social media. There's a lot of people that are always commenting that they just want to go, like they want as loud as possible, the most spaced as possible. Um, and I think this plays a very important part that that's actually not how you should be hearing it. And it's not how the director intended it. And a lot of people have got their subs. Like there was a guy yesterday, I think, who had his SVS set up at like plus whatever and he's got four svs pb 16s or whatever they are um and he's like my house is rattling and he's and he's so in love with it and that's great i guess if it works for you but realistically that's not how you're meant to be listening to it no that's a bit gimmicky you know and if it makes you happy it makes you happy go for it um you know when we design a theater when you guys design a theater we're really after getting it to sound the way that the uh, director and the audio engineer and the producer were listening to it when they were sitting in the studio, mm. either in Hollywood or in London, wherever they are. Well, it's all about sound uh, quality, not SPL. Sound quality, yeah, yeah overall. So, yeah. And, and then it's really about the integration of the of the sound from all the loudspeakers and all the subwoofers together. That's mm. what we're after. Mm. Um, so, yeah, dynamic range is important. So, let's assume that um, the loudest sounds that are on the on the disc on the recording are in the 110, 115 decibel range. So you should be sitting at home listening to those very recordings that we have here at 110, 115 decibel peaks, whereas your the normal yeah. like the conversation that goes on in the movie will be around about the 80, 85 to 90 decibel, something like that. Yeah, well, yeah, unless it's yeah. my voice. <laughs> That's true. <Absolutely. laughs> um, so now we need a loudspeaker that can actually reproduce uh, up to 115 decibels in the seat, which means, you know, that's three, four meters away. So at the loudspeaker, it must be able to produce easily six decibels louder, say 119, 121, 124 decibels of peak at the loudspeaker, one meter at the loudspeaker. Mm. Now, um, we all know our little dome tweeters that we have in our hi-fi loudspeakers and little dome tweeters, by the way that they work, the laws of physics determine that the maximum that they can produce is 105 decibels. Clearly that falls short of 119, 120, 124 decibels that we're after at the loudspeaker. So in other so, words, you're, you're also implying that uh, really soft dome tweeters just can't hit reference. Absolutely not. No, yeah. no. And, and, and what they do is two things happen. First of all, the customer will hear 
uh, the mid range, which is the, the mid range driver that will go louder, but then the, all the high frequencies, everything from say 2k and up doesn't become any louder. So he, he turns the big knob on the amplifier, the bass and the mid bass goes up, but the high frequencies don't follow. So there's some immediately the customer without realizing it notices that something is wrong. So he keeps turning the big knob, the bass, the mid bass goes up, but the high frequencies stay down. And the amplifier tries to push them up, but the dome tutor cannot produce more mm. SPL. The only thing that happens now with the dome tutors, it starts producing more distortion. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're compressing your dynamic bandwidth range because the soft sounds become louder, but the loud sounds can't go up. They're already at the maximum of the dome tweeter. So you're compressing your dynamic range, which is the difference between me whispering something lovely to the, to the, you know, my co-star or loud explosions going on in the background. That is your dynamic range. Now the, 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 the creative expressive, tool that the, 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 the director and the producer have with the dynamic range, you've just destroyed that by turning on yeah. the big knob and it can go louder. You've turned the soft sounds louder, but now they're almost the same. So now everything is at the same level, basically. And by, by working with a dome tweeter in your home cinema room, you're effectively destroying the movie soundtrack because you'll never get correct dynamic range. So, so, I mean, this sounds, uh, you know, I, I can imagine there'll be a little bit of pushback here because there's more than one or two brands out there running, <laughs> <laughs> running dome tweeters um, and probably sitting there going, oh, my God, what's he what saying? Did, what did they just say? Yeah, yeah no, and, and, and I don't care if they push back because it's, it's like pushing back literally against the laws of physics. Yeah, yeah. If somebody said, oh, my, my dome tweeters are good. Yeah, I'm sure they're very good, mm. but they still won't produce more than 105 decibels. Mm. That's just the way the laws of physics work. And I didn't invent those. No. Nobody did. They're out there in the universe, and that's just the way that this particular uh, technology works. And right, you can't yeah. change that. Um, but there are plenty of other technologies out there that do produce high frequencies at higher dynamic range levels. Mm. Um, so ribbon tweeters are one of them, but they have their own peculiar problem that they can only distribute at a at a vertical uh, pattern. They can't distribute um, up down. Mm. And the one that we use for Priscilla is this. Um, this is our version of the dome tweeter. And this thing is uh, two kilos mm -hmm. or magnet. You see how big this magnet Just is? Just pull like, it back. Um, we can't, we've got a, a vertical slotted window, a bit like a, a phone turned sideways. So just bring it to your, I think, right. Yeah, there That's you go. It. Perfect. There That's, you go. Yeah. So this is a uh, yay big. I'll measure it quickly for you. So this magnet has a diameter of eight and a half centimeters. Mm. And it sits on a waveguide, and you see that it goes through uh, a, a funnel there, basically. Yeah, yep, yep. And this funnel here, this this exit mouth there, is one inch. Mm. And that's why this is a one-inch compression driver. But the magnet is actually um, eighty-five millimeters, mm. and it comes out the throat there. Let's see if I can get some light. Let's pull in it back it. a bit, mate. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you can see it there. It comes out of there. So that is the one-inch hole back there. And yeah. then there's a little bullet shape in there, which is a, um, uh, a face corrector. And then it goes through this shape here, which, it, as you can see, is an ellipse. Now, this is something proprietary. We make this ourselves. We design this ourselves. And this is actually fully a Priscilla product. So what, this is an ellipse. Now, an ellipse is not an oval. It is, in fact part of a circle. If you take a, a cylinder, a circle column, mm. and you make a, a, a diagonal cut through, cut through. that mm. cylinder, you now have created an ellipse. So mm. an ellipse is really just a, a variation of a circle. So what we do here is, God, this thing is heavy. We take what essentially is a round uh, sound wave, because sound is just round. Come to yeah? your right again, mate. All sound, it goes in all directions. And we slightly direct that to a slightly lower vertical and a wider horizontal dispersion pattern. So this waveguide has a dispersion pattern of 90 degrees in the horizontal and about 60 degrees in the vertical. Obviously, because we don't have many people sitting on top of the ceiling, so we don't need that much sound to go up or down. But we do need the sound to go left and right, which is where you and your family are sitting in a row, basically. So that's why we have these waveguides. 
Now, other waveguides that you see out there in the field will be um, rectangular, like a, like a mail slot. And um, there is a problem with that is that they direct the sound in lobes. So the, the biggest way, uh, diameter there is actually in the diagonal from this corner to that corner. And then most of the sound goes into this corner, that corner, that corner, and that corner over there. And you get lobes going into the four corners. And that's why rectangular or square waveguides are just not ideal. So what we have here is a compression driver that can produce easily the decibels that we need up to 123 decibels, for instance, for this unit. And we have a waveguide that directs that into the room. So we, we take the energy that is provided by this compression driver and we direct it to the listening area, to the seating where, where you and your family are sitting. And this way we're very effectively using the energy that is provided by this unit over here to actually send it to your ears. And we don't send it all the way around the room. And that then brings to the next topic, which is acoustic treatment. Yeah. Well, before before we go on to that, one of the questions, yeah. you know, one of the things that we talk a lot about is off-axis sound. Um, and on a lot of speakers, mm -hmm. obviously, as you move off-axis from the central sound, um, that sound quality can, on some speakers, get, you know, worse and worse and worse. Now, I mean, on all speakers, it does deteriorate. Um, but how how much change, you know, have, how much research has been done perhaps and how much change are you seeing between the central on-axis um, sound that comes out of that type of, you know, driver um, as you come around to your 90 degrees? Uh, I guess there okay. must be some change, but how so consistent with is a, it? With a waveguide like this, within the design dispersion pattern, which is this 90 degrees horizontal and about 60 to 80 degrees vertical, depending mm. on which model we're using. We have multiples of these. Mm. Um, within the design dispersion range, the off-axis sound is as good as the direct ahead on-axis sound. As good and almost better. And really, we've measured that. We've done that research. So with a waveguide, we have something that we call controlled dispersion and controlled dispersion means the angle at which the sound comes out but also the audio quality within those angles is constant and that's why this is known as a constant directivity waveguide mm. yeah so you as long as you can see within this angle here that comes out of the the waveguide as long as you sit within this angle here over there you will hear all the frequencies produced by this high frequency driver. And I guess that's a valid point where every, let's say you've got three or four or five family members, they're all going to be experiencing something very similar. Very the similar. The worst thing well, is, is the husband and wife they sitting. together sit within this area yeah. here. And 90 degrees is pretty wide to capture, you know, uh, a seating area. Yeah. And, um, you know, we use that in all our LCRs and surrounds, and you can literally plot those angles out within the, in the whole room as you go around from, you know, the LCRs to the surrounds, mm. what you end up with is a oval shape of um, area that is covered by all the loudspeakers. And that's what you want. And that's a, an important, I, mean, I think we've discussed this in the past, but in relation to um, having something that's so accurate and, and essentially giving everyone that great experience and, and hitting all those uh, frequencies and everything, mm. then you... And let's say you get that 100% right and it's great. And then you, you introduce subwoofers into the mix, which kind of start another beast because a lot of the time, you know, Andrew uses this analogy a lot where the husband is enjoying the movie and the wife's sitting in a, in a spot in the, in the, in the room that's uh, in, a, in a dip or a, and he's sitting in a flat. So, you know, there's so many beasts to that space. Um, and I think if a lot of people aren't aware even of this whole, you know, type of speaker that they should be using um you know a lot of people probably aren't even aware that maybe their soft dome tweener isn't hitting um you know those areas that it should be hitting yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, yeah so basically by moving from a dome tweener loudspeaker to a compression waveguide loudspeaker you now have all the dynamic range that you want through the whole yeah. frequency range from from bass to high frequency yeah mm -hmm. On top of that, so now we have SPL dynamic range, yep. sorted. Now we also have dispersion, which means we steer all the frequencies to all the seats in the room, but 
outside that, we really fall off, and it means that we're not sending high frequencies to every floor and wall reflective service that is present. Mm -hmm. And that reduces our first reflections energy in the room. So we get a more precise sound field in the room where we get more direct sound to the seating area and less random first reflections all around the room. What about, um, you know, I'm sure someone out there is itching to ask, I mean, you know, uh, do you get many questions with regards to dome tweeters, and, sorry, uh, and compression wave ride drivers um, being better for theatre or better for music? Um, you know, to my mind, I've always been of an advocate that accurate sound reproduction is accurate sound reproduction. I don't really subscribe mm. to this better for music or better for movies. I mean, heavens no. above, what, what happens if you have music in your movie? Um, you know, but, um, you know, what's, what if your symphony orchestra goes play at 110 decibels? Yeah. So, <laughs> so I, I'd be interested in just your comment on, on this, you know, cause there is quite a school out there. No, no, this is a, this is a musical speaker and this is a, a cinema speaker. And uh, I, I, I just, I, or you cool. know. Gravity was in the demo room. Gervin had Kaleidoscope, and we played Gravity, which was Atmos. Obviously, it was an Atmos mix, yeah. and that had no, no sound. It had music, intense music, and then it had explosions. And I mean, that was a, that was a joy to listen to. Yeah, yeah. We we like you, uh, Andrew, believe that any good sound system that can do movies should be equally good at doing music because obviously movies are made of uh, dialogue, dialogue, music and effect, DMA. That's what it's called in the industry. You know, when audio engineers, uh, recorders go at, to work on a movie, they record DMA, dialogue, music and effects. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the, when I worked in London for DTS, I was in and out of studios where symphony orchestras would pile in at 8.30 in the morning and at 3.30 in the afternoon, they had recorded the entire movie. That's how yeah. quick they do it. They do it in one session and that would be your Lord of the Rings movie done. Uh, they pump it out uh, because it costs money to get you know, 40, 60, 80 people in a room and play music. So they do it quick. That's probably uh, for um, consistency as well, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So look, no, I believe uh, if you have good electronics, and I know, you know, we've all been talking about uh, AV uh, processors, uh, you know, from Trinoff to Storm to Anthem to everything else on the market, and, you know, what works, what is good enough, what is better, what is uh, over the top. Um, you know, those units must be able to do everything. They must be able to mm. do music. They must yeah. be able to do stereo. They must be able to do movies. Mm. Same with your amplifiers. A good amplifier will do everything regardless. Same with the loudspeakers. And I truly believe that Priscilla loudspeakers are excellent, excellent at doing music. The difference there is that you may not be used to listening to your music at the correct dynamic range that is actually recorded within the uh, re recording that you're listening to. Mm. Especially, by the way, if you're listening to uh, vinyl, because vinyl is um, 88, uh, 88 hertz. It has a higher dynamic range than um, CD. Don't quote me on the numbers right now. So if you listen to a really My good vinyl, you yeah. actually have a higher dynamic range than you get on a CD. And yeah. um, you will, with good vinyl installation, exceed the dynamic range of a dumb tweeter quite easily. Um, so yeah, I would recommend anybody who wants to listen to good music to again use Priscilla loudspeakers. Mm. Um, not not that there's any bias there at all. So. No, not at all. <laughs> but at the same token, I'll throw it your way: mm. is have acoustic treatment in your room. If you listen to a room that is full of glass and hard surfaces, yeah, you're gonna have a, a miserable time. Yeah. You need you need absorption in the room. You need diffusion in the room. A bit of a f reflection is good as well, but um, you know, start with having a third absorption, a third diffusion, a third reflection, and 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 work your way. Uh, yeah, well, if you we, we've reflection in the room, you're going to suffer. 
Yeah, um, one of the things we battle against is is people over treating a room, and you know, it's a whole other topic which we can talk about. But well, um, yeah, acoustic treatment is an interesting thing, and you know, we see, you know, I've spoken about this a lot. We see a lot of people on YouTube, you know, whacking up foam everywhere, and you know, it, base traps. The, yeah, but the, the the key to me, for me, is the word treatment. You know, it's like going to the doctors unless they know what the diagnosis is, you can't treat it. So you know, often I'll go into a room and I'll say to someone, "What problem did you treat?" and they'll look at me and go, well, "What do you?" Mean. I just yeah. I put up it's like well okay so I'll um, I'll quickly just talk about the uh, the philosophical differences between absorption diffusion and reflection absorption in your room because we're talking about rooms we're not talking about the free world outside that we're no longer allowed to go into we're talking mm. about our rooms at home um, if you have a lot of absorption in the room effectively what you're doing is you are absorbing i.e capturing and and killing off yep the energy that you've made from your loudspeaker. So your loudspeakers produce a sound, it reaches the wall next to you or behind you, there's absorber material there, and that absorption material does its job, it absorbs, i.e. It, it kills off that energy, and that energy is now gone. Conversely, uh, diffusers use the energy to, uh, to uh, disperse, to scatter, that same energy throughout the room. Yeah, so yep. uh, a direct sound from a loudspeaker reaches a diffuser. The diffuser has a multifaceted pattern in itself, and the audio wave breaks up into many, many tiny fractions of audio waves. Each of those fractions, first of all, is delayed because it has some kind of a labyrinth pattern inside the diffuser. So the, 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 the delay is there but also the energy in each of those little fractions is much smaller. So what does that add up to? A diffuser makes your room sound larger. So you're sitting in a room at home, small room, it's only four by five, whatever. You put diffusers on the side walls. Those diffusers to your brain make your room sound larger because you don't hear a first reflection coming off the wall at the sound pattern, the sound signature that you're expecting from a wall that is a meter away from you. No, that reflection is now broken up. It is delayed. The energy is smaller. So to your brain, it sounds like that wall is now two, three, four meters further away than it really is. Yes. Hmm. We, we, we're big ambassadors of diffusers. I mean, we use them in pretty much... I don't think we've We use them more the at the back of the room. The reason we don't use them on the side often is because of doors and windows. And also, um, we do use them behind the panels as well, but um, also because I tend to measure the RT60 time in the room. We're looking at how much live time there is in the yeah. room as well. But certainly, you know, we've done that in the past and we will continue to do that in the future. In, in You know, but we find in the smaller rooms that energy... Uh, is is quite live in the room, and um, sometimes adding a diffuser actually just elevates, elevates that, that ambient, well. you know, reverberant floor. So, um, so the, but, yeah. the trick that we're coming out to is you need a combination of yes, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that will give you the benefits of both. So you get on the one side, we're making the room sound larger, we're you know lively but not too uh, not too present. Mm. And with the absorption, we're taming that. We're making sure that we don't get too much of it. Yes, yep, agree. So. so, yeah, you asked me, what can you do at home to make your room sound better? I'd say allow the dynamic range to exist. The dynamic range is there, both in the video and the audio. Your Blu-rays, your Ultra HD Blu-rays have the dynamic range on them. So you need, you need to control your ambient light, get your room dark, allow your projector to have that dynamic range in the video. Same with the audio. Allow your audio to be dynamic by using high dynamic range loudspeakers. Then work on your acoustic treatments. And that is a combination of absorption, diffusion, and also a bit of reflection to keep that room sounding lively and, you know, the way it sounds in your room. So, yeah, those are the three fields that I would point at. And then um, get yourselves a really comfy chair, sit down in a cold beer and start watching movies. Yeah, look, and I think I think the, the points, you know, we've talked about home cinema designs, tips and tricks. So we've talked, you've covered those tips and tricks, you know, in terms of getting a dynamic range, getting your acoustics right in your room. But one of the things that I think this answers for people is when you come in and talk to us and if you've got especially a large room, um, you know, with some distance in it especially, 
Um, you know, they go, well, how come, you know, the, the, the theatre that you're quoting us on here is like three times the price of the one from the retailer next door? Mm. It's like, well, here's the reason. Because um, it's not that we're selling the same system at three times the price. What we're doing is we're actually looking at, at how you get your clarity, your definition, your dynamic range, so that when you sit there, you have this overwhelmingly wonderful experience. Mm. And um, you don't get that unless you have enough headroom in your amplifiers, unless your speakers can produce that dynamic range, mm. um, unless your well projector can produce that same visual dynamic range. Um, and And those things are where where that investment goes. Um, I, th- I think yeah. a lot of people also forget, I mean, a lot of people have always bought packs and, you know, the shop sells these speakers with that amplifier because it's a flavor of the month or what they got too much of. But one thing a lot of people don't realize that they might even, they could do it themselves, is doing a power calculation based on the speakers they've got, the sensitivity versus the amplifier they've got. Mm. And are they actually getting the sound to their seating position? Because some people might have had that stuff for years and not actually realise that they're not because the amplifier doesn't have enough power mm. um, or that their speaker's only 86 sensitivity and the amp's only 100 watts and you're definitely not going to hit that, you know, hit the seat spot. Not from any distance, yeah. No. So I think um, a lot of people that have existing um, systems is... is Probably a power calc is, is one of the things I'd suggest. Yeah, what we'll try and do is I'll see if we can put a link to a power calculation mm. and put it in the comments below so you can have a look at that and um, and uh, you can run, you know, find out the specifications of your speakers, have a look at the specifications of your amplifiers. But just remember also your, your speakers need to be capable, as Gervin has said, of reproducing that dynamic range. Um, just because the numbers say it, it does it, if, if you're, even if you're mid-range and your tweeters can't actually reproduce that power without distortion then you know you're on a hiding to nothing as well so yeah any yeah. A, any last comments there Gerben? oh um i'm enjoying my home cinema a lot at the moment i'll tell you that <laughs> so, well there's no yeah, cinemas well, open anywhere is there so yeah not in australia yeah, no, anyway uh, and i always find it funny that people say in our industry it's like oh the wife doesn't like it when it's too loud or this or the other my wife uses the crap out of our home cinema. <laughs> <laughs> She's the one who's always in there. It's like we're watching this, we're watching this, and like binge watching some whole series or watching a whole bunch of movies. Yeah. Well, um, what, what we're liking at the moment is we're getting more. You know, it, it used to be almost 100% a male-driven industry for some reason that I don't necessarily understand. Um, mm. But recently, especially the last two or three jobs, mm. the the a lot of the, involvement. the partner, the wife, or whatever, has got more involved. And um, sometimes quite dominant in the discussions, which we're really loving because ju- instead of just engaging with one guy who's actually, you know, fighting w- with a budget or someone who wants, mm. you know, to spend the money elsewhere, having having both couples fully engaged in, in that project is actually quite exciting. And uh, and also they both get the rewards, which is fantastic. So Absolutely. And, uh, you know, home cinema is so diverse nowadays from, you know, putting stuff up for the kids and, you know, there's so much good content out there and i'm watching a lot of the new platforms yeah i'm i'm watching a lot of really good docos on youtube and all the netflix stuff i'm, I'm not just Plus watching this and... anymore i'm watching everything yeah. and uh for me you know um watching traditional broadcast tv yeah don't do that much anymore i, no, I don't know I don't, I don't have free to wear tv in, in i don't house, even know so. yeah. all right guys well look thanks very much we'll wrap up here and uh, we'll catch you in the next video really appreciate you joining us gerben thank you very and thanks well, for being part of our first what would you call it Cro- cross the country live L- live podcast, podcast video, video yeah. thing I know. So. it beats flying all the way to perth i'll tell you that yeah, yeah. well you can't anyway so oh. Can't wait till we do that again. I want to be at your beaches and we'll go for a nice Italian meal afterwards. How about that? (laughs) Sounds great. All right, guys. And thanks for joining us, folks. Please also, as usual, add your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so that you get notifications for new videos. This is uh, Andrew, Enzo and Gerben saying goodbye.